Hey guys, Darkster here with another video for you guys. This one is going to be uh, my first Force of Will video for the channel. I, I wanted this to originally be my Force of Will review, but I think I'm going to do this deck tech instead because we're getting close to the next set and everything, and I kind of want to get this over with before it, it kind of just gets too late. The review can come at any point, uh, so I'll hold out on that for a little bit. Now, uh, this deck is the deck, it's kind of my second deck. My first deck was actually a Bahamut deck. Uh, that I tried out. Uh, I was kind of a set behind with it. Bahamut was really good in the previous uh, meta, but now with the Reflect meta, and now with the Reflect being nerfed as well, uh, it was kind of weird for me to play uh, Bahamut uh, as my main, and I hit a lot of walls with it because of that. So I kind of tried to rework it a little bit. I do like red uh, as a color and as, um, as, as uh, you know, a, a type of, of playstyle, the whole aggro playstyle with red. So I wanted to maintain the red aspect, so I went down and I looked at what was potentially uh, cards that I can use, and you guys should be looking at a picture of, um, of the current deck. Uh, the current deck that you're looking at that picture is the most up-to-date version. I played at, the, uh, at my local store's tourney yesterday, and uh, since then this is the change, this is the tweaked version that you're looking at. Uh, the only thing I switched out is uh, from yesterday is I took out one of the stones um, which isn't important we don't need to talk about that but the bigger more notable change is I took out four flame king shouts actually I took out three flame king shouts for three uh, burnt to cinders I believe and I kept one flame king shout and put the three that I took out into the sideboard now why did I do this the main reason is because um, flame king shout doesn't hit enough targets for it to be uh, I, I feel personally very good uh, main board uh, card. I, I think it fits better in the sideboard board and being able to adapt it in to games that it can hit. Yesterday's tournament, um, it was not killing or doing anything to most of my opponents. And the one opponent that it did do anything for, it was kind of just like Cheshire Cats. I mean, yeah, I, I was able to stop Incarnation into um, Broccoli or whatever, you know, the card. <laughs> I, was, I was able to stop that, but... Um, yeah, that was about it, you know what I mean? And then the Cheshire's got thrown into the deck anyway, so it's like it really didn't do much. So it worked better as a sideboard card. When when I got uh, the guys at the store to look at my deck and tell me what I can possibly change, they also said the exact same thing, just like take out Flame King Shout uh, and put it in the sideboard because it really just doesn't hit anything. Uh, the big combo of Flame King Shout would be Flame King Shout into Snow White. Snow White is still an excellent card in, in combination with Flame King Shout, and you can actually kill some big stuff with it, but it's so focus on that synergy. I feel like Slam King Shout this doesn't synergize with a lot of the other cards in the deck. It just really works well with, with Snow White, but that's the only uh, interaction that works the best. So that's something we switched out, or I switched out, for uh, Burn of Cinders. So yeah, that's that's the big notable change. Aside from that, let's get on to uh, this part of the video. Before we actually get into the J-Rulers, I just want to show you guys the mana base. Uh, one little red stone, excellent card, and aside from that, just it is mono red, so just uh, straight nine uh, Firestones, classic Firestone. So that's the mana base, or the stone base. Sorry, I come from magic. If I say anything magic related, uh, my apologies. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the mana base or stone base. And here are our J rulers. Now you, I'm using Reflect as the main J ruler. This is the one I tested with. This is the this is the card I, I used as my main J ruler. But if you don't have Reflect, possible alternatives that you can possibly find are or possibly use is uh, Bahamut. Now, Bahamut is good because he still maintains that aggro playstyle. I would recommend finding a place somewhere in the deck for maybe two of uh, Demon Swords. Like, maybe two, maybe three, uh, maybe even four if you can find the space. I just don't know what I would take out for it, but at least two Demon Swords. And uh, I would say you have to play Bahamut. If you're going to play this deck with Bahamut, I would say play him a little bit more um, uh, carefully. Uh, don't, be, don't go down the whole Baja Blast method of Bahamut and just try and do that crazy damage, turn two, just get him on the board and attack. Because the problem that happens there, and the problem I always face with Bahamut is, even though you can get a lot of damage out quickly, for whatever reason, if Bahamut dies, yeah, you have a, a bunch of cards here with this particular deck that lets you uh, curve out again. But the problem is you're just slow now. It's like now you're sitting at one or maybe two mana, and you really don't have anything else where your opponent might have three, four plus mana, and they're able to now kind of work with you now and, and deal with you. And it's like when you go for that level of aggro right from the start with Bahamut, uh, you, you get put in that kind of corner. So I think the best way to play Bahamut, if you are going to play this deck, 
is to play a little bit more careful, a little bit more um, passive, and wait for that moment where you can get your Demon Sword out and just swing in for the win. Uh, maybe turn 5 or turn 6. Uh, that, that, that's how I would personally consider playing this deck in that situation. But then again, you do have to be aware. Maybe maybe attacking early is the right way about it. I don't know. It's like you got to kind of feel it out. But I would say playing a little bit more safer, a little bit more careful is the best way if you're going to use Bahamut as your J ruler for this deck. And it does, it could work. Um, I haven't tested it myself. I did test it with with, uh, with Reflame, Refrain and Reflect here. And it works really well. I think Refrain and Reflect, but we'll, we'll get more into them actually when we, once we get past all these J rulers. But yeah, uh, Bahamut is a potential card. Another one is Sylvia. I got Sylvia yesterday uh, before the tournament started. And uh, I'm going to actually build around Sylvia more carefully because I think if, if you're not using the green that she produces, I feel like you're kind of not taking full advantage of the card. There are a lot of great... Um, here's Guyvers. I'm thinking about trying to fit Gui Guyvers into uh, either this deck or even um, the Sylvia deck that I want to make right after this. But uh, if you're going to use Sylvia, I think you should take advantage of like Beastly Attack and Rapid Growth. They're just They're just really good cards that would synergize really well with this deck especially since you have things like flame sprites um being able to pump one and just swing through with flying at any turn for basically one mana getting a card out for one mana just being able to do that is very powerful in that sense but overall sylvia can work just as mono red too if you're going to just copy this entire deck and just switch him out for sylvia it could still work sylvia works a little bit better i feel than bahamut just because uh sylvia forces you to play a little bit slower and then the moment she actually gets onto the field she kills something off. She's more versatile. Yeah, you have to play her a little bit slower than you have to play Bahamut. But the moment she comes out, she kind of pays off for playing slower. So I like that aspect of Sylvia. So that's also a potential uh, card. I am going to make a Sylvia deck um, kind of using the bare bones of this deck here. Uh, I'll, I'll post... Uh, if you guys want to see like the making of and stuff or my process and you know theory crafting and all that, you should follow me on Twitter. The link's in the description. I post pictures of decks in, 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 that I'm working on and any ideas that I come up with. All that stuff is on Twitter. So that's where you want to go to if you want to see that stuff. So I'm going to start working on this right after we do this video. So yeah, hopefully I get to play this at some point and I'll do a video. All, all, my, all my deck techs, by the way, I'm going to have, I'm, I'm actually going to have to play them. I'm going to play the decks before I do any videos on any of these decks. Uh, I don't like the idea of just making a deck in the theory crafting standpoint and then not testing it. Because the thing is like the Flame King Shout thing, I know that only because I tested it. If I didn't get to play the deck, I wouldn't have known it. So I see all these videos on YouTube of guys just, you know, they were crafting a deck and then showing the deck tech, but they don't know if it's actually going to work that well and if it's going to be varying, if it's going to vary based on the meta of your individual store or tournament or whatever. So it's something that I think everyone should test out before they do these kind of deck techs, and that's what I'm always going to do. Before you, if you ever see another deck tech of mine, it's always going to be tested after some kind of tournament and some kind of external input other than just myself, so, yeah. So, the main J ruler for this deck, or the preferred one, is Reflect and Refrain. Why Reflect? Uh, Reflect is still broken, if you ask me. Even after the Irada and, and the nerf to uh, Reflect and Refrain, I think it's still a very powerful card, and it ends up kind of being just an all-round excellent J ruler. Uh, being able to buff everything by 200 is very nice because a, it lets you kind of get in just a little bit more damage, just a little bit more damage when you're when you're attacking your opponents and such with your with your creatures um, or resonators. I'm sorry, with your resonators. Uh, but also in the situation that say your opponent blocks you for whatever reason, you can pump one of your creatures and maybe trade with them or get one of your creatures to survive. Um, in the in the situation your opponent might be uh, trying to hit you, you can have it on the flip and and. and Flip, uh, you know, pump it back uh, using your tokens. It's it's just it, there's just a lot of ways to play this card, and it and it works really well for for aggro because aggro doesn't have some aspects like card searching. You know, it's like you get to pitch a card for for a new one, things like that. It's it's very nice because the whole thing about aggro is that a lot of people kind of uh, ignore or forget is that for aggro you need to have some kind of uh, natural curve. You want to make sure you have that right turn one drop. You want to make sure you have that right turn two drop three, and then four has to you know curve out properly. You have that natural curve to aggro, and a lot of these aggro decks they don't have that natural curve. And the problem is because you're playing aggro, you're kind of emptying out your hand and such. So you want to make sure that every card you have falls into that natural curve. And 
reflect lets you do that. And then when you're ready to kind of go for that win, refrain will help counter any potential spells or, or resonators that might get in your way. And also, uh, it can actually help you search out for something that you may need to win the game with. So you can flip, search something, get it onto the board the next turn, whatever. It's just it's very versatile uh, when it comes to a J ruler, and it works very well for um, aggro. So yeah, that's uh, that's the J ruler. All right, so we have four rug gigs, almost basically just just a go-to staple card when it comes to uh, playing red. To be honest, especially since we're mono red. This helps you again fix your hand a lot of the way, a lot of the time, the same way that Reflect does. Um, it helps you not have to use a Reflex Search. You can actually use it for the pump instead and build counters that way on the card, and instead use this for the search. Also, the synergy between Ruck Egg and Kathuga here, which you also have four of, is absolutely excellent. I, it's, I, I call it the Kathuga Egg combo. They just go together so well. Um, being able to your first turn one play is excellent when you have both these in your hand. What you would do is um, tap for mana, uh, Ruck Egg into Cthulhu, attack, buff with Reflect for 200. So you're doing 700 damage turn one. Pretty freaking crazy. Um, there was actually a point where I did exactly that, but I had another Cthulhu in hand, and I sacked the Cthulhu, Cthulhu into a Cthulhu into another 500. It was just a, a strong turn. Uh, turn one really just a lot of damage turn one puts your opponent in a really bad spot right off the start um, And just a great search engine. So Ruck Egg's a great search engine, and then you get to search off that So you do all that and then you're going for a search as well So Ruck Egg is absolutely excellent at uh, the one mana curve And then we have a three mana curve here, which really basically is a one mana curve And it just kind of works off it works as like kind of like a sneak attack thing It's like no matter what you got if you're going for that last little bit of damage you can totally even get rid of something like a Lancelot just to get a Cthulhu and, and, and smack something with it. So it is a great card for that. Aside from that, we have four Flame Sprites. Uh, Flame Sprite was a card that I underestimated playing. I, I originally had four of these in the deck instead. Um, and the thing is, Flame Sprite actually ends up being better. First thing is, again, Swiftness, which is great, being able to play and an attack. The other thing is the flying. The flying is hugely advantageous, being able to not be hit by things and being able to just kind of swing in with them. Um, very useful. And again, with the buff capability of Reflect, it's not actually 200, it's 400 in that sense. So 400, just cute little 400 damage getting thrown in here and there adds up. On top of that, the whole aspect of just being able to tap to do 100 uh, not having to swing in, not having to do anything like that, and being it based off a of fairy. So if you have more than one of these on the board, they'll do more, more and more damage. Um, the the increased damage isn't really the important part. The 100 doesn't really do much, but the real reason you want that 100 is for where it is it the four demon flames in the deck. Now this is an is an excellent synergy for these two cards. You're gonna Play for for two mana. You can basically kill every anything out. I was killing go Gwyvers like crazy yesterday. Uh, just any Gwyver that hit the board, it was just like ping demon flame. And my friends just sitting there like looking at it like, how does what? <laughs> it's just it's it's an excellent combo. It, it it just kills and reaches so much. You know, it's like these two go together really well uh, because of that. And it's just a great synergy. And of course, four demon flames. Um, just synergizes with pretty much everything, any kind of damage you can get out. If you can get a little bit out and then just blast them to get rid of it. Uh, doesn't hit J rulers, but I mean, just being able to remove pretty much any creature with just the, with, with a poke is, is very, is really good. Um, aside from that, of course, four Lancelots. I mean, if you're playing almost any, if you're playing this game, it's almost like you should have Lancelots in your deck. It's just one of those cards that are, are it's simply too good not to have. Uh, since we're playing mono red, it's almost mandatory that we play these, and because of something like a uh, little redstone and reflect here, if you get to you know pump pump, uh, this gets to a thousand, and then being able to do that extra seven hundred damage, it's it's very versatile in that sense. It's very easy. It's it's just the, your J ruler doesn't really do much, and this is just one extra mana that you don't have to tap and maintain. You can just pump. It, it it's great uh, because of that. So four of these. As, as expected. Um, aside from that, we got two Hectors. This is a card I had four of in the deck, but um, honestly, it's, it's one of those cards that you can consider maybe switching something out for. 
I mainly like it because A, it makes your, it, it's, it's a natural, it's a good curve basically, being able to get this out turn two, do some stuff with it, turn three, you might be able to play another one and then into one of these and then pump one and then do damage with the other. And if you have a Kathuga, this is actually a great Kathuga card too. You can um, just get rid of a Hex. So you can play attack with one of these, right? You can play attack then Cthulhu attack, and it's just it's it's versatile in that sense. So that's why I like it. But I I dropped it down to originally I had four. I dropped it down to three, and now I'm at two. And I feel two is a good spot, and it also gives you an opportunity for something to sideboard in or out if you need to or want to. So though that's why I have the Hectors there. Decent card, not the greatest card, but just synergizes well with this deck, which is which is kind of what we're going for. It's just natural synergies in the deck. Then we have four Snow Whites. I think this card is very respected, but I think it could be more respected. This this is kind of one of those cards that are, everyone respects, but it's it's better than everyone thinks it is. It it does so much. Seven hundred on on the back end for the defense means a lot of cards aren't getting through it, and it's basically trading off, if anything, with a lot of cards that are far stronger than it because of the three hundred bonus. And the thing is, um, because of the seven hundred health. Even though you might attack and you can hold it, you have more potential of holding that extra bits of, of, of counters, basically. So you can you can attack through with it and do more and more damage in future turns. If this were, say, a 500-500, the extra 300 would kind of be spent every attack. If we're even 500-600 every 300, you kind of spend on that attack. But being 500-700, you actually have the opportunity to hold those counters a lot more than you would otherwise. And that's why I like this card so much. So... Four of those, as expected, and then kind of curving out your uh, your creature base. Uh, we jump every 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 card in this deck is under three mana, except these two. These are the only two that aren't uh, three mana. We got Gillis Deray's the Golden Dragon, freaking beastly card. The moment this card hits the board, your opponent kind of goes, "Oh fuck! How much? How much? Like how big is it?" And it's like. The thing is, it costs six mana, so the chances are it can be six stones worth of, of damage there. Um, if you have a little red stone on the board, it, it doesn't count, so it's five stones worth, but it's a big, big card in that sense. And it works as a great sideboard card. I'll show you the sideboard in a second after we get through the spells, but there it is. Uh, we got two Rapid Decays here. I, got, I almost said Abrupt Decays from Magic. <laughs> Sorry. But anyways, two uh, Rapid Decays. Another card that can be sideboarded out. Um, but the thing is, it's nice having two of these just in case someone else has a Landslot. Just, pump, just get rid of them. Landslots are scary. <laughs> so it's like you want to be the only one with Landslots on the board. Get rid of these. Get rid of other people's Landslots using this uh, as much as you can. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, from there, we got four Thunders. Staple red card, honestly. It's like... Uh, just win. You can win with it when you get them low enough. Uh, even even the whole aspect of Cthulhu into something important, like even Cthulhuing uh, a Lancelot, so Lancelot attack Cthulhu damage, and then Thunder for the win is an excellent combo to finish your a lot of opponents off. And I, uh, yeah, Thunder. I, I don't even need to say any more about Thunder. Thunder is just kind of a staple for red. Uh, of course, here are the Burn to Cinder. This hasn't been tested yet extensively. But I do see it working a little bit better. Again, Flame King Shout was what was originally on the board, but this will probably hit a lot more and remove a lot more. And for four or for two mana, I can maybe cast two of these and remove something really big, or even do something like cast one of these into a Demon Flame, for instance, and and do a lot there. So that's why uh, I'm, I'm, I, I like this card. So it's good, and also it takes away Impressionable from J Rulers and hits J Rulers. There you go. So very good card there. One Flame King Shout for the situation that you want to remove something the opponent has, etc., etc. It's just a decent card, um, and it's sideboardable. I do have three more on the sideboard, so you can add more in, or you can take this out for something else. So, there's that. And, of course, kind of one of your big winning con win conditions is uh, Split Heaven and Earth. Uh, this card has done me 1,700, 1,800 damage on a single turn. Um, very capable card. You only need two ofs. Uh, mainly because you can draw into one somewhat consistently just from playing by turn six or so, um, and you can just search it out using reflect or uh, refrain here. So, also pretty useful. You can actually try and draw into one, and then if you draw into one, you can actually search out the next one and then do a lot of damage to your opponents. And also, it works as a great sideboard card to remove something out to uh, switch in basically. 
So let's talk about the sideboard, uh, starting with, uh, you know what, ignore this. It's a 14 card sideboard, ignore ignore this. You, find, you can find something else to replace this. I don't know why I kept this even in it, but uh, yeah, just ignore that. <laughs> Going from there, we got two Death Sights, um, just honestly a standard go-to card, removing uh, Impenetrable and Swiftness from opponent creatures, or opponent uh, J rulers, um, pretty useful. So yeah, go-to standard Great sideboard card. Two more uh, Rapid Decays. Again, I almost said Abrupt Decays. I checked the card again, just to be sure. Uh, two of these, uh, just in case you run into more cheaper creature matchups. Uh, maybe another aggro matchup. This would be pretty useful for that. Uh, we got two Bonsai Attacks. Uh, I've never actually used this yet. Uh, I haven't actually sideboarded in. It's something you might consider switching something out for. Uh, but in theory, it's pretty useful, or could be useful. Uh, mainly in that situation where it's like, I can win right now, maybe, and if you do the math right and you throw out a bonsai attack, you might be able to win the game off it. Um, again, it is bonsai attack, so you could just lose the turn after, too, if, if the opponent has something. So it's, it's one of those go-for-the-throw-risk-everything type cards, but uh, that's just how aggro is sometimes. You just gotta go greedy uh, and go for the face and, and see how it goes. So there it is. Uh, two Susanoas, uh, Susans. <laughs> um, this is one of those cards I've considered just mainboarding um, or using as my mainboard card, but uh, the real reason I don't is because Gillis is the card you're switching out. So you keep Gillis in your deck um, if you're facing someone that doesn't have dragons, but if you find that they're, they have Gwyvers or something, uh, switch out this for the Susans. Uh, and that's basically how I have been playing it. The thing is, there are some kind of dragon is popular right now at all times like a lot of decks are still running Gwybers. um uh, you know the, the the deck that won yesterday's tournament was playing sylvia you know it's like me that that's mainly why i'm like why not just keep the two susans instead because it might get me more value being able to come in cheaper as it is versus you know yeah this could potentially be a lot of damage but turn six you know it, that kind of thing so it, it's something for you guys to test out it's even something i'm not even fully sure about um i even considered maybe one of each and keeping it like this instead um but i don't know about that either because then i know the, the, the advantage is since we are playing reflect where did i throw reflect i don't know but our reflect somewhere here uh since we are playing reflect you could go and search for one of these which is the advantage um of it so maybe keeping one in the deck each could work out since we are playing reflect but i don't know something to test out uh, as of right now for the deck tech, this is how we have it. So that's two Susans in the sideboard. Uh, then we got uh, three Crime and Punishment. Uh, kind of works very similar to uh, Demon Flame in a way, but it's very useful in the sense of something like, say, Lancelot attacking into something or attacking with Lancelot and they block. You can buff using Reflect and then... Bang. You know, one of these would wipe pretty much anything out, or most things out. So a great card for that if you're facing something that uh, opponents that have, again, Gwybers, just bigger cards in general, um, bigger J rulers and stuff. This will this will be useful for that. And then here are the three Flame King shouts that we talked about earlier. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of it when it comes to this deck. Uh, it's it's very straightforward, straight aggro, red deck, the natural curve. Um, reflect really adds to it. Where is the reflect? I, I've completely lost it. It's somewhere under all these. I can't find it. I've lost my reflect. <laughs> it's gone. It's, there's a whole bunch of cards around here you can't see. But anyways, it, it does synergize really well with reflect. Here it is. Found it. <laughs> there it is. It synergizes really well with reflect. Um, and and they all kind of work off each other. Helps with the curve. Helps with the aggro matchup. Uh, I personally like it. I think it has a lot of potential of being a fairly good deck. Uh, I didn't do too well with it yesterday, but I'm still a new player, and that's the thing. And there are a lot of matches. Actually, there are plenty of times I could have won two matches. Uh, I, I feel like I could have gotten in second place fairly easily uh, if I just knew how to play Reflect better. Like I, I, This was the first time I played Reflect, and this was after Irada. So I, I didn't have the right mentality or the timing for the flips. Like I would, I'd be like, I, I would tap for mana, and then I'd be like, can I flip it? Oh wait, I can't flip it now. And if I did flip it, if I didn't tap for the mana, which I didn't even need the mana, I could have flipped and won in some cases. There, there, there are a few misplays basically that I made as a newer player. But if you do know how to play the deck better and you do have more experience with reflect, this could really do a lot, uh, really quickly. Uh, my best games I won by like turn three, I think. So yeah, this deck could 
this deck could really wreck your opponent really quickly. And it does have great later game potential too, with uh, cards like Gillis and a few sideboard and Susanoas and all that stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed the deck tech. Uh, follow me on Twitter and, and uh, I have a podcast that I started. All that's in the description. Uh, I will be starting uh, potentially making the Sylvia deck pretty much right after this. So I hope you guys enjoy that as well uh, coming in the future. Uh, keep an eye out for the review. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. As always, please subscribe, rate, and comment. And Dark Stroud. Peace.